Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at how to create and assemble a warband for weekend warriors. Choosing your band of warriors is a big part of the game. And this is where your imagination can be let loose as you create your warband and equip them with the gear and skills they need to succeed in their battles. In Weekend Warriors, a warband will consist of between 1 and 10 warriors. I recommend using 4 warriors per player per skirmish, and especially when you're starting out. You can use more or less if you choose, but make sure that each player has the same number of warriors for each skirmish, unless the skirmish rules say otherwise. There are four steps that you need to follow when creating and assembling your warband. Step one, give your warband a name. And this is where you can set the tone of your warband with a fun or sinister name. Step two is where you choose your warriors. And here you decide how many warriors you'll be taken into battle. And then you select some miniatures that you want to use to represent them. In step three, we fill out the warrior cards and the instructions are in the how to create a warrior section of the book. And that's exactly what we'll be going through in this video. And finally, step four, you choose one warband perk and you use the warband perk table to either select or roll for a random perk. And the warband perk builds into the narrative of your warband and gives them a special advantage that they can use during the battle. It's really fun to have a pool of warriors that you can keep and choose from for each battle. Over time, as you play lots of games, you can develop the whole pool and have a strong bunch to choose from. So even if you only need four warriors for a battle, you could have 10 or more that you can choose from in your pool. And this pool will come into play much more during a campaign as you develop your warriors over a series of quests or missions. Weekend Warriors gives you lots of control as you can build an entirely new warband for each battle or keep the same ones each time. And if you want to grow and develop your warriors, keep taking them into battle to gain those awesome warrior tokens that you can spend at the merchant for extra gear and skills. It's really fun to bring in a rookie or budding adventurer who might bring a new skill to the warband. Have fun watching that rookie advance their skills until they are just as good as the seasoned veterans. Now let's work our way through the warband sheet and we'll look at all the warrior cards and their characteristics. And then we'll fill one out just so you can see exactly how it's done. So we'll put together a warband that we can use in our battles. Here's our warband sheet and you can find this in the book to print off and use. And let's start with the warband name. So for my warband name, I've gone with The Chosen, and this name was influenced by a little background that I put together. And I just write it in the left-hand section here. But if you want to write a longer story or a longer background, then just do that on another sheet of paper. But here, the group of adventurers have been chosen by the custodians to carry out important quests. And the group have agreed to protect the secrets of Brambleberry Bridge at all costs. And Brambleberry Bridge is a fantasy campaign I've put together, and you can get this for free by purchasing the book. I'll send you a link to download this with a discount code. Next, we'll choose a warband perk, and you can find the perk table on page 46 of the book. And for this warband, I've chose Hold Fast. And Hold Fast is going to give them some additional skill. So here it says, when holding an objective, warriors can add plus one to armor save rolls. So they really want to protect the secrets of Brambleberry Bridge. And so anytime they're maybe transporting the Brambleberry Mead or looking after some treasure from Brambleberry Bridge, I imagine that they'll be determined to keep it safe. So Hold Fast really plays into the narrative. Now we can focus on the individual warriors. And so this is the time where you choose the miniatures you'd like to use. And I've got this one that I think is an awesome miniature and I really want to include it in my warband and build the warband around it. So let's grab one of those warrior cards from the sheet and I'll show you how to fill it out. So first we'll start with the name and I've got a name in mind for my warrior, which is Bramble. And so I'll write the name in there. 
Then we want to give our warrior a role, and on the role table you can choose from eight different roles. And I've gone with the fantasy role table here, and I'm going to choose Bramble to be a bard. He's got that violin, so I imagine it is like some kind of magical instrument, and so bard fits him perfectly. So I'll write in bard next to the role, and then we want to look at the abilities that come with that role. And you have to choose the ability number one first and work your way through one, two, three, four in a chain. So you can't have four straight away. You have to start at one and work your way along buying those abilities in order. So first of all, as a bard, he's a kind of healer. So he's going to get unlimited medipacks or healing potions to take into battle. So we write that down under the abilities and I'll just put it in number one. Then we want to look for a skill. And so we want to combine that bard role with a skill. And here we've got another table with eight different skills. So looking at these, I want Bramble to be my leader. So that's a really easy decision for me, but you could choose any from the table. So I'm going to choose leader and then I'm going to write leader next to the skill field on the warrior card. And just like our role, he can choose the first ability in the chain. So ability number one, then I'll write that down again in the bottom under abilities. And it says we can re-roll any one dice per round. And as a leader, he can let any of the warriors who are friendly warriors use that re-roll. So that's a really good ability for a leader to have as he kind of inspires his other warriors in the warband. You can also add a little picture if you like. You can draw it. And I'm just going to use my Crow logo from Tabletop Skirmish Games because that's perfect for this. Now we want to look at the different actions and all the different characteristics. And the first one is movement. Now most warriors are going to have a movement of two inches unless otherwise stated. So we just add that in there. Then we've got hearts and most warriors will have a total of 10 hearts. So we add 10 into that field. Now we're on to armour and this is one of the most important parts of building your warrior. And here you can see a little table. So first of all, on the left hand side, we've got armor and then we've got light, medium and heavy armor. And whichever one you choose will influence your actions, your reaction and your armor save. So this is a really big decision and it really influences how your warrior will perform on the battlefield. If your warrior is wearing light armor, they can perform more actions. They're more agile. They can also react better so they can move out the way of a bullet or arrow or they can find things easier because they can search a lot quicker. And then with their armor save, with the light armor, that's not as tough. So it's going to be a lot more difficult to defend against those attacks that get through. Heavy armor, on the other hand, is only going to give you three actions. You're going to have heavy armor, so you're slower. You're not going to be able to do as many things per activation. You're also going to be slower to react. But if a projectile, like an arrow, does get through, the chances are your armor is going to save it. So you've got a better armor save. So here, the lower the number is better for your armor save. And then you've got the medium armor, and that's a nice sweet spot in between. Not too light, not too heavy. That's just right. So I want Bramble to have light armor because I want him to be a lot agile, more agile. I want him to be able to have more actions. And I think it fits the look of the model that I'm representing the warrior with as well. So first of all, I'll put the armor save in. So this is going to be an armor save of five plus. And so I write that in the armor section there on the card. Then we'll look at reaction and reactions five plus as well. So that goes in there. Then the next thing is to see how many actions we can make. And that's five. So it's nice and easy. We write five in our actions. So you'll note that whichever armor you choose, the number is going to be the same for all of these characteristics. And this makes it really easy to remember when you're playing. Now it's time to choose your weapons. And typically most warriors will have a ranged weapon and a close combat weapon. So let's start with the ranged weapon. And here you can see the weapons table is all designed for a fantasy quest. And this has got lots of different weapons that all have different actions, light, medium or heavy. And they're also going to have different characteristics that go with them. I'm going to choose the instrument for Bramble. He is a bard after all. and I'm going to call that instrument a violin. Then I'm going to look at how many actions it costs to use that. And that is two actions. So I write two in that field. Then we've got the range and the range of the instrument is naught to six. So that goes in the range section. Next, we've got the number of attacks we can make. And in this case, it's going to be three. So we can roll three dice and I write three in the attack section. Then with power, this would normally be a modifier. 
plus or minus followed by a number, but there isn't a modifier here, so we just put a little dash there. Then finally, we've got the damage. And now the damage is different for an instrument. This is minus one. Normally, if the damage is one, two, or three, that would be how many hearts your enemy would lose. But in this case, you'll be using the instrument to heal your friendly warriors. So it's a minus one. So they don't take any damage. You heal them instead and they get their hearts back. And that's explained in this section called roles and conditions. So to use an instrument, you must be a healer or a bard and the damage heals hearts instead of causing damage. So there we go. So that's the first weapon we'll choose for Bramble, and that's the range weapon. Now let's pick something so you can get stuck in up close. And for this, the model's got a short sword, so I'm gonna choose short sword. It fits with the narrative and it fits with the model. And so I write sword in the weapon section. Then we can fill out the rest of the characteristics for that weapon, just like we did for the violin. And there we go, we've got our first warrior for our warband complete. Bramble the Bard is our leader and we filled out his card on the warband sheet. Now in this section, which is gear cards, tokens and notes, we can add any gear we buy for him. And I'm just going to use the descending rope as an example. And with this, he takes no fall in damage. So we can write the item and the conditions or abilities it gives your warrior in that section. Then we repeat the process until we've got all our warriors complete. So if you want to have a warband with four warriors in, you just do this process four times and then your warband is ready for battle. Now we've gone through all of the four steps you need to build your warband. We've given them a name, chosen the warriors, filled out the warrior cards and we've chosen our warband perk. This is the first step we'll need to complete in the game of Weekend Warriors. So now you know how to build a warband, come and join me for the next videos in the series where we'll look at how to create a skirmish, write a story, go through all the rules you need to play the game and much more. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful. And if you're interested in picking up a copy of Weekend Warriors yourself, then I'll put links in the description below. And if you purchase it from Wargame Vault as a softback cover, you'll also get the PDF for free, or you can buy the PDF separately. And if that's not available in a country that you live in, then you can also order the print book from Amazon. And if you order it from Amazon, just drop me an email with proof of purchase, and I'll send you a link with a discount. So you can also get the PDF for free. As a bonus to say thank you, I'll also send you a link to download for free a sci-fi mission pack, which will give you five missions, and a fantasy quest pack, which will give you five quests. And don't forget that there's more videos on the channel with lots more content coming, so you can have an overview of the game, look at the book in detail before you buy, and also go through all the rules and everything you need to know to play the game. Thanks again for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page, and thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share our ideas and help each other out, and you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description, and it'll be great to see you there.